Forge Cup Ministries is a Bible-based church. Our mission is to bring people to Jesus Christ. God's word is above all things. It's sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating to your soul and spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit and open your heart as you make God's word the standard for your life. Promise TV, bringing people to Jesus Christ. Oh, 
Christ's name. Amen. Shall we clap for Jesus? We may be seated. Our viewers, we thank God that you are there. I believe and trust that the hand of God is upon your life. Wherever you are watching us from, in your sitting room, your working place, your bedroom, anywhere where you are, whether you are in the hospital, God Almighty is there with you. And I trust God that you touch your case, he will fill the cup, and you feel his presence. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Yes. We continue with the, the message. Holiness. Apostle Paul, before he became an apostle, he was against the church. But when this man encountered Jesus, the holiness of God Almighty came upon his life. And he was sent to go and preach the word of God. He did not start preaching because he was educated, no. No. The Spirit of God came upon his life to change the character of a state prosecutor into an apostle. There must be a difference between your career and the calling from above. There must be a difference between a believer and a non-believer. I mean, before you become born again, you possess a different character. And when you become born again, you possess a different character as well, meaning the spirit of God who possess your life. Isaiah, before he, you know, he was sent to go and proclaim the kingdom of God. He was a sinner. He was what? A sinner. Then when the grace, I mean the, the spirit of God came upon his life, one of the cherubims touched his mouth and he said, your sins are forgiven or removed. Then he heard the voice to say, whom shall I send? That is when Isaiah answered to say, here I am, send me. Before that, he could not hear the voice of God or him to respond to the call of God because he was a sinner. Even when he heard people saying, holy, 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 he was confessing that I am a sinner, I'm ruined. Why is that today? We are using our mouth to claim what we are not. Why is that today? We are not making a difference between holiness and natural character. There are people who are gifted, like public speakers. There are people who can encourage you. There are people who can talk to you like counselors. Those are natural what? Gift. But when the spirit of God is talking to you, the spirit of God comes with answers or solution, protection. It is a divine nature of God that will come upon your life. Because as long as you are not holy. You can be appointed as a leader, an elder, 
a deaconess, any position which will be available to you, you carry the character of this world. How are you going to differentiate the character of a believer and the character of a non-believer? Because what you possess is the character of a non-believer. Not until when the holiness comes upon your life. That is when you put a difference between this character and that character. He is holy. Even his children must be holy. For example, people of God. You are a Zambian, and then you, 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 along the line, maybe you are in the bush walking. Then you meet someone who is from Angola, is a Portuguese. How are you going to communicate to each other? Because there's a language word, barrier. You'll be looking at each other. You don't know what this person is thinking about you. Even you, you don't, you don't know. Simply means you cannot even work together. Because there is no communication. There is no oneness in language. I want you to know these people of God. Make no mistake. We can fake everything here on earth. But after this life, there is nothing like fake. There is nothing like fake. What you are doing here and what you are confessing, as long as you are not calling what you are confessing, how are you going to live a holy life there where they don't lie, where they don't fake? They worship him 24-7, holy, 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 holy. You heard the song? God bless the brother who composed this song. God will never, never forget about his own people. He will never abandon you. Even in a crisis, his holiness will always be a compass of your life. Even when you are sick, the holiness of God Almighty will be upon your life. Listen to this Isaiah 6 before we go to Romans 12. Verse 1. But let me just call you to this one. Isaiah 6 verse 3. And they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole what? Earth is full of his what? Glory. Meaning the people who are calling him holy, holy, holy. They discover him. They believed in him that he is holy. And he is God Almighty. When they started calling him, the glory of God came down. I hope and trust I will be able to uh, say one or two things concerning this. But I'm believing God for that one. Verse 4. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook and the temple was filled with the smoke. That smoke represented the presence of God Almighty. It is not the smoke of cigarette or the smoke of what you cook. No. If you follow the journey of the Israelites, whenever God appeared to them, he appeared in form of a smoke. Even when you, sometimes you'll be praying, you just see a smoke. Before you know it, you see someone standing on that smoke. The Bible says that the glory of God filled the whole earth. And then it continues to say, the sound of their voices, the doorpost and the thresholds shook and the temple was filled with what? The smoke. Why is it that today when we pray, we just follow the, 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 the program or the time? Do you know that sometimes when you carry the holiness of God Almighty, you may program to say, I'm going to pray for five minutes or ten minutes. Before you know it, you have been in that trance for ten hours. Because it is not you to control his time, it is him to control the time. Let me jump. You, you can go and read all of it. Then one of the selfim 
flew to me with a live coal in his hands, which he had taken the tones from the altar. This is now Isaiah. With it, he eats my mouth and said, See this, as touched, your guilt is taken away and your sins atoned for. This is now Isaiah. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Whom shall I do what? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send me. That is when you become, you can't serve God. When you are, you know, you are occupied with these fleshly things. No. You cannot. You need to possess the holiness of God Almighty. So that even when you, are, you know you are facing all this crisis, it is the holiness to overpower Anything that will come along the way. Sin and holiness cannot work together. And sin is sin. Today, spiritual life has become now a career. The knowledge of God has been reduced to human knowledge. Before now, you can't force yourself to say, I'm saving God and you are speaking on his behalf. You are risking your life. But because of the blood of Jesus, yes, you can say, I'm a Christian. And yet, you are not. You need to be holy because the one you are saving is holy. How are you going to hear him? How are you going to know his mind about your life and about others without the holiness? Reading the Bible is good. But without the holiness of God Almighty, you are reading the history of Christianity. This is why even a witch doctor, when you go there, you see a Bible, a late one, so that you can see that, oh, they are also saving God, and yet... They are not. They are just deceiving you. You have been there. You know what I'm talking about. You didn't find the Bible when you visited the witch doctor. Hmm? You saw it. Hmm? You saw it. Why? Bible without the holiness is record about Christianity. It is the spirit of God that will give now life to the word. Isaiah answered the Lord when sin was removed from his mouth. In fact, he was complaining that I'm a sinner. Before the old one touched his mouth and said, your sin, your, the guilt of your sin has been removed because I've touched your mouth. He is holy. Even us, his followers, we must be what? Holy. We communicate through holiness. We don't communicate with God through our voice. There are people who can pray on top of their voices. At the end of the day, they are possessed. I have heard where people of God saying, I have never seen this kind of power. God Almighty possess that power. And when you become old, you possess the same power. This is the power that will hold, you know, the whole entire universe. It is learning. Is there any longer pipe in the sky? No. The power of God creates things. This is why when you possess the power of God, you, when you are praying, it's like you are creating be healed. That thing which is damaged through the word, be healed. The holiness will go and fix that thing. It is not the voice. It is the holiness that will enter the body. Touching, touching, touch. You can touch that person. You can, you can even, whatever you, you, you want to do. But the healer is God Almighty through his power. Let's go to Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 1. Therefore, 
I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. This is your true and proper worship. This is your what? Your true and proper worship. Let me repeat this reading again. More especially, 1B. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. This is your true and proper worship. First of all, you need to surrender. Your intelligence must submit to the holiness. Your title must submit to the holiness. Everything that has to do with the flesh must submit to the holiness. So that you become what? A living sacrifice. You possess the holiness of God Almighty. That is proper worship. Look at the way people lie with the Bible. Hmm? I swear, eh, with all my what? Tomorrow is stealing. Can you see money just because you swear you lift the Bible and you see money eh, there to say this if you want, eh, this is your money, so if you agree on this. Are you going to remember the Bible that you hold the day you occupy the office? The answer is no. It is only the holiness cut and say, no. I am under his eyes. I can't do that. The thing that we do behind the church, it is what is known to God, not to human being. You can deceive your fellow human beings because they are blind like you. But God is not a blind person. Offer your body to God. Surrender it. This body, people of God, is nothing and useless without God himself to be in you. Whether you sleep under mosquito net, you are protected by all the battalions, they are full of dogs, you know, surrounded your yard, you eat 20, you know, times in a day, you go and eat lunch in South Africa, look at you. You are a human being, one day you come back with stomach pain. You go and see the doctor, they will tell you that your liver is rotten. How are you going to survive that one? The goodness of the holiness is that there's nothing that you can do and you regret later. No. Before you take any move, the holiness will speak to say, don't do that. The consequences is A, B, C, D. You say, thank you, Father. What you are doing now is going to backfire. So stop it. Oh, thank you, Lord. But without the holiness, nothing and nothing that can stop you. Listen to verse 2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. Is good, pleasing, and the perfect will. Come on. Listen to this one. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your what? Your mind. You cannot serve God with the same mind that you are using when you are, you know, you are, you are attending your college, your university. No. The holiness works for God. The mind works for your stomach. So it is now the holiness that can control your mind or engage your mind. It is not your mind. Because mind, if you have, if you have anything that will pass through your mind, you are carried away. Are you there, people of God? I will still come back with the same message. Because we are faking Christianity. The respect that, you know, we, we, we receive from people made us to behave like we are like Jesus. Oh, servant of God, bless you. 
bless you. You are not even holy. You can't even dream or have a vision. Even you yourself, you know that I'm in trouble. Even if you are calling me servant of God, I don't even sleep in the night. I am on tablet. Because if you cannot hear from God, and they are giving you that respect, you are provoking Satan. It is not what you say, but what you carry. It is very easy for anyone to say, I am an apostle. I am a believer. I am what? Look at the type of dreams that you are having. You can't even remember one. He is holy. You can't talk to him with your voice. You talk to him with your heart. You can pray without opening your mouth. The holiness of God Almighty is upon you. You are linked up through your heart. It is here on earth where you can say, yes, I'm a child of God. When you go there, you can't even open your mouth to say I'm a child of God. Because you look at your color and the color of those people who possess holiness. You, you just say, oh, I can't say I'm uh, uh, Because looking at the color of this, uh, you say you are holy. No, I'm not holy. I'm just here to know if they will accept me. No. Don't fake your spiritual life. It is dangerous. Faking your spiritual life, it is what? Dangerous. People can, you know, call you woman of God, man of God, servant of God. You yourself, you know that you are not. Oh, she's a believer. I got saved in 19... That is language. That is what? Anyone can say I got saved in 1970 something. But look at you. You are a gossiper. Hmm? You are a problem, even to your family. You are a problem to everyone. Because you attended the crusade in 1970, where they go for the how to go, you go there and say, hey, I'm there for today, I surrender to Jesus. Look at the thing that you have done from that day up to now. When you become a child of God, you possess the nature of God. You hear from God. You talk to God. He will guide you. He will control you. He will tell you where to go, what to do. Even before you eat, you tell, if it is time to eat, you, tell, you can eat. There is a program in your family, maybe wedding. Everything is going on well and you are part of it. Tomorrow is the wedding day and they are relying on you. They are also want you to be there. Because you hear from God, God say, don't go there. Don't go there. Immediately you hear that voice, your phone, you start now ringing. Blah, 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 Where are you? Where are you? Are you going to pay attention uh, to the phone call? If you hear from God, you stand your ground to say, I am not coming. Reason known to God. This Christianity you fake, that you are you are not a child of God. It is your mind deceiving you that you are a believer. Inside your heart, you are not. There is nothing like the Chamoneke we know as long as you hear from God. Abraham carried his own son, the only son. He did not say, how my wife will react to this one if she discovered that I have killed my... He did not. Because he was talking to God. And God Almighty is greater than anyone. Are you holy? Hmm? Are you holy? Ah. God bless you. <laughs>